Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I have my first guest in the studio and I'm very excited because this man is one of the biggest voices on Nigeria's social media. He was nominated as the 2018 nominee for a Future Awards Africa Prize in New Media. He is um, he works in digital communications, he's a creative director of Disruption Communications and Editor-in-Chief of Lists.ng. He's also a farmer, a Cornell Alliance for Science Global Fellow, and of course, like I mentioned earlier, a Future Awards nominee. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me the very chidi, Okereke. It's a pleasure and a delight to have you. Thank you, Olive. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, so first of all, I'll say um, happy 2018, happy new year. <laughs> We're already, are you excited about the new year? I mean, it's some parts of the world, it's already the I new know. year. So yeah, Do you yeah, have a new year ritual? Um, I usually just spend it at home um, okay. with my Bible, with a drink, and then you just reflect on the past year, and then, you know, I, I itemize plans for the next year. Basically, that's what I do every year. But I hope to do something different this year, though. Really? Uh, maybe okay. hang out, maybe go to church, maybe, you know. Okay, yeah. we should have a conversation about that, since you're oh. interested in going to church. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, we can. Okay, so Chidi, let's, let's, let's start your journey with you, you know, let's mm. start from the very beginning of your journey. Mm. Before you started doing what you were doing, where did it all begin from? Um, so when people ask me how I got into digital marketing, I always tell them I, I stumbled into it basically. Um, I, I studied mechanical engineering, University of Port Harcourt, and I mean, I basically thought I was going to build a career in engineering, um, work in some oil rig or something. Um, but then I, I didn't necessarily like it a lot. I felt it was boring. I felt like it wasn't really me. I mean, I, I wasn't going to be bad, very, very good at it. So I, I started thinking about other possible careers. I've always been active on social media. I've always written, I've always tried to share stories, basically make people laugh. Are you active even whilst you're in university? Oh yeah, to some extent I was. Um, so when I was serving, I wrote something and somebody saw it, Eddie T.F. Young, I always mention him in my story. He's the CEO of um, Anaco. And he saw something I wrote and he got in touch somehow and um, told me he wanted me to come work for him. Um, it's a long story, but eventually I came to Lagos and I always mention this, my first interview, I know I flunked it. I know I didn't do so well. I've interviewed countless other people and I know I wouldn't have hired myself. But after the interview, he still took a chance on me and said, you know what, I feel like there's something in you. And he just gave me a chance and I built myself from creating content to social media, to online reputation management, to actual digital marketing, the whole 360. I built myself and I mean, here I am today. So I stumbled on it and I told myself I was going to be very good at it. And and look at you now, look winning now. awards here and there, <laughs> like that's what you were born to do. Yeah. At the time when you stumbled into digital marketing, were there pe people that you looked up to? Were there people in the industry that were already doing what you were aspired to do? Okay, like I said, I stumbled into it. Um, as at the time I went for my interview, I didn't know there was an industry. I felt, oh, social media is just you post, you retweet, you share and all that. I didn't know there was an actual industry where people strategize, create content and all that. So. I think my first, my first, um, my, the first person I knew in the industry was Eddie T.F. Young. He's the person I looked up to. He's the person I still look up to till today. But then discovering a whole industry made me start looking, looking up to people like um, Trudy Jidonwo, people like um, Debola, Debola, Lagos, um, a whole lot of other people. Ayeni the Great, the guy who's behind BHM. A lot of people in the media and comms industry, yeah. The people who have inspired me over time. Uyi, um, Uyi who founded DM2 Group, so many of them. I always look up to them and some other people who are still coming up who are not even as big as they are but they are doing great work in the field i look up to them as well you have some of the most hilarious tweets i dare say <laughs> i remember the first time i met you i remember the first thing i said oh you have the troublemaker on twitter you have ridiculous and i, I must say very interesting content how do you come up with your content to be honest do you, do you like plan it ahead of time or you know it's just a spur of the moment thing these things basically write themselves except my stories actual stories okay so i started writing stories on instagram sometimes they are spur of the moment stories sometimes i actually think about them i do a series a series of stories about things that have happened in my life but then of course i make it dramatic and all that but the actual tweets that have become very popular for they just happen i just see a tweet on my timeline and the response just comes and i just tweet it and i go to sleep and i wake up and i'm getting thousands <laughs> of retweets and people are i'm all over instagram and other platforms it's it's there's no plan there's no conscious effort to go viral in quotes there's no conscious effort at all it just it's just witty responses to witty stuff. Wait, can you remember the first tweet ever that went viral? The first tweet of yours <laughs> ever that was like the breaking point that everybody started to know, who is this Chidi Okereke? Okay, can I, you remember I, what I'm that was? I'm not sure. I think it was back in 2013 or 2014. I can't remember. 
Um, one particular one I, that comes to mind now is one about going to church. I mean, I had ironed my clothes and everything, and as I was about to leave, Nepal brought light. Like, I was ready to go to church, and Nepal brought light. You know how light is cast? Nepal brought light. So I was like, well, Lucifer, you have won this battle, but not the war. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think <laughs> so, yeah, I basically, I, I, that's, I mean, people, people had been seeing my tweets and all that. And then when Twitter introduced the quote feature, where you quote somebody's tweet and all that, somebody said Nigerian men are not romantic. So I was like, I mean, what do you think this kid sang about? Your bum bum bigger than Bombay. Is that not romantic <laughs> enough? And that really picked up. And from then, I started seeing myself on um, blogs like Cracks TV and all that. And I, I wasn't even active on Instagram then. But all of a sudden, people started following me and all that. So Now, how are you able to strike a balance between handling all the social media platforms? Some people know that you know, Twitter is your kingdom, Twitter is your domain. Some mm. others like us know that, you know, Instagram is our area of influence. We don't mm. have energy for all of them. <laughs> so how are you going to advise someone who wants, who, we understand that we're in a social media era and it's important that we're active on as many platforms as possible. Yeah. And you're able to find a way to do all of this together. How do you mm. do it? Do you schedule your tweets? You know, do you get someone else to do it for you? How are you able to manage all of them? I think the, the, the luckiest part of everything for me is I actually work in digital marketing. I work in communication. So it's like, it's like, this is my profession as well. So I'm basically just mirroring my profession on my personal platforms. If I can handle and then my manage many platforms for many brands, many pages for many brands, I mean, I should be able to do that for myself, which is one advantage, one edge I have. Um, like I said, I wasn't, the plan wasn't always Instagram. Twitter was my, Twitter has always, still is my major platform, but Instagram is beginning to want to overshadow it. Um, it is because my tweets used to go viral on other platforms, uh, especially Instagram, that Instagram became an active platform for me. Then I discovered, if I'm going to advise people, understand that different platforms have their different audiences, their different unique audiences and all that. Create stories for them, not just copy and paste. There are some things that I post on Twitter I can't post on Instagram. There are some things that stories that I tell on Instagram, it's not relevant on Twitter and Facebook and all that. So find a niche. Yeah, when you find out your niche, grow in that your niche. If it's Twitter, if it's Instagram, if it's Facebook, whatever it is, grow in that niche. And then if you want to cross, if you want to cross across platforms, yeah, do it gradually, but always know what your niche is. Right now, my niche is Twitter. Instagram is growing. I don't, I don't do a lot on Instagram, but Instagram is growing massively. I get plenty of engagement there. I've been crunching the numbers, and it's really, really big as well. But Inst Twitter is still the major platform for me. All right. New media is becoming a thing. I mean, that's a category of people that you are nominated for new media. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see more young people getting involved with social media, with digital marketing. Mm -hmm. What is the future for digital marketing in 2019? Ah, digital marketing will continue become continue being strong. It's, um, it's, it's a no-brainer. Um, there was a time when digital marketing was an afterthought for many brands. You know, it's something they say, ah, okay, let's squeeze out some money for Twitter and Instagram and all that. But now it's the first thing people think about, I'll give you an example. Um, my colleagues and I, we basically ran, basically did something for one of the concerts that just happened. I'm not sure I can mention the name of the concert, but yeah, one of the concerts that just happened. And from the back end, we know it is our, the work that we did that made it as big as, as it was eventually. It's the biggest concert this year. You can think about any name. <laughs> I have the concert in my yeah, already. It's the biggest concert this year. It is what the, the efforts of my team and I that basically made it as big as it is, as hyped as it is. In the end, it was really, really good. Like, it, it matched the hype. There were some... some Lateness uh, yeah, and, and all, all that. that. Yeah, okay, I think you get it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it is... We've seen now that there was a time when people would focus on billboards, focus on TV, focus on... No doubt, these places, these platforms are still effective, but digital marketing is not an afterthought. And in 2019, the prediction is that more, more companies, more organizations are going to spend a whole lot more on digital marketing because it is measurable, it is trackable, it is real time, you can retract, you can manage reputation, you can respond to people as soon as possible. It is huge. It is really, really huge. And I, I feel like it's the it's going to top it's going to top marketing budgets for most organizations in twenty nineteen. All right. Now when it comes to creating awareness about brands, which is what you do, mm. some people think and some people who have already understood that they are brands as themselves, they find mm. that they want to go viral and they use negative news mm. to go viral. So mm -hmm. people want to go on certain blogs, you know, just cause trouble, say one <laughs> rubbish thing like that, just so that they can pick it up. And certain mm -hmm. blogs, and once certain blogs carry you, you know the other smaller blogs will carry yeah, you. Well, okay. When it comes to publicity, how important or not important is negative news? So 
a lot of people in my field, my colleagues will tell you, all publicity it's is publicity. publicity is good publicity. I, I beg to differ. I mean, my, my deferring is not to say invalidate their own opinions. It's just my style. I, I believe, try as much as possible to always put out positive news. The platform we run, list.ng, we don't even do clickbait. Yeah, there's, there's been opportunities to do clickbait and then go viral and have plenty of people going to your site, getting more views and all that. But I tell, I had the editorial team, I don't handle the day-to-day -day posting anymore, but I had, and I tell them, no, this is not what we want to be known for, factual news. Say it as it is. Whether people click or not, that's their business. Say it as it is. Publicity is good, but at what cost? What do you want to be known for? If you want to be known as a controversial brand, yeah, go on ahead. There are people like that all over there. I can't mention names. There are people out there who are, who are making money off negative publicity. But that's not my style. If I was doing reputation management for anybody, I will tell them we're going to make sure we promote the positives and try to quell the negatives as much as possible. Be you. If you come off as controversial, if your views are controversial, I personally, my platform, there are times I put out controversial stuff. It's not a conscious effort to be controversial. It's just because this is what I believe. So if you believe in it, yeah, that's fine. But if you want to, you are consciously trying to be controversial. Okay. I don't know. It might work for you, but I'll not endorse it. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing all this with us. It's been thank a pleasure you, speaking you. with you, Chidi. Mm. And I stumbled somewhere where you said you, you were going to be an author in 2017. Are you an uh. author yet? I said that. Somewhere, I saw somewhere where you okay. said, oh, you've always wanted to be an author, but you yeah. think 2017 is your year, and we're in 2018 so, now. 20 in fact, 2019. So, okay, so, so I want to put you on the spot. Yeah. Do you think that by the end of 2019, you'd have authored a book? I'm not sure. So when I, when I, made, that, when I made that statement, I probably, it was, it was not wishful thinking. I had a plan, but when you're trying to chase certain things, you'd, you, know, you put some things on the back burner. So... There's a, whole lot, there's a whole lot of projects we're doing in 2019. Um, I just got back from Cornell University. There's a project about biotechnology. We're trying to promote access to innovation so agriculture can improve in Nigeria and all that. There's a whole lot of projects already lined up. Hopefully, um, we're working on trying to make a film and all that. So it's, it's, I'm putting the, the author thing in the back. Um, okay. Yeah. I, you're right when you're, because of how not lucrative books are, you write when you already have money. That's what I think. Especially mm -hmm. if that's not your career, you're not pursuing it full time. So until I feel like I'm comfortable enough to, you know, write a proper book, All right. I won't be doing that. Thank you so much for joining us, Chidi. Thank How you. can people follow you to find out all that you're up to? You know, your social media platforms and other platforms. How can people follow you? Uh, my Twitter handle is C H Y D D E. Sorry, my Twitter handle is C H Y D E. My Instagram is C H Y D D E. Did somebody steal your name, though, before you went to it? Yes, that's oh, why. Sorry. I went. I joined Instagram late. Oh, sorry, yeah. but I did really well. Uh -huh. All right, we've been speaking with one of the strongest storytellers and content creators in the social media space today, Chidi Okereke, and he's shared with us his journey, his predictions for what digital media will look like in 2019. So if you are interested in digital media, now will be a time to kick in. Are you open for mentorship? Like, you mentor people? Ah, yeah, I mentor a couple of people. Right. Like, yeah, I'm currently doing that. All right, so if you want a mentorship, you can hit him up. Thank you so much for joining us. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.